Hey friends. So when you're working with C sharp, you can certainly, uh, you know, drive stick shift if you want to. I'm going to go out to the command line. I'm here in Windows. I'm going to go to the GitHub folder and uh, make a folder called, uh, I don't know, random YouTube. Go into that folder, empty, I'll say .NET new console. I'll make a console app. I think I'm running .NET. Uh, what do I got here? I got .NET 7 and I got .NET uh, 8, a uh, release candidate, because .NET 8 is not out yet. So I've got that installed, and I just went and I did that. And I've got program.cs, and then I've got this project file. Okay, so that's a .NET project. And then that OBJ folder, this right here, that's some binaries. And then if I actually say .NET build, you're going to get some more build artifacts. This one here is the bin or the binary folder with all the build artifacts in it. And if I go into that bin folder, you can see I made a debug build. And I go into that and see it's a .NET 8 build. And then we have random YouTube.exe sitting right there. So now I can go and say random YouTube and it says hello world. Okay. And we'll note that we're down there in the bin debug folder. Okay. So I could open that up in Notepad. We can see here, hello world, hello friends. Maybe I'll put this over here. Then I'll say .NET run. Hello, friends. Okay, so this isn't like fun, right? I could sit here and do for loops and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, but I'm not getting syntax highlighting. I'm not getting IntelliSense. It's a whole thing. So that's why you use Visual Studio, right? So then I could go to Visual Studio, which is Visual Studio, in this case, Visual Studio for Windows. I have the Visual Studio installer. And I've got Visual Studio Community. I, I like to run them side by side. You can run multiple versions. I'm using the free version and you can get. And you've got the Community Preview and then I've got the released version. And I could go and open up, for example, Visual Studio. Go ahead and bring that up. It's coming up on another monitor. And then I'm going to move it over. Let's go ahead and close that. We'll say Open Project or Solution. I think we called it random YouTube. We'll open that project up. I'm going to bring Visual Studio over from the other monitor. Get the cool, nice what's new. And then we notice over here in the corner, we've got this Solution Explorer. So here's our program. And the Solution Explorer isn't a file view. Okay, Solution Explorer is interesting because what Solution Explorer is doing is it's giving you the ins and outs of the solution. Ah, this is interesting. See here it says the current Visual Studio doesn't support .NET 8. .NET 8 is not out yet, so I need to use Visual Studio. Uh, in this case, Visual Studio Preview, the version for .NET 8. So I'll go ahead and open that up. Here comes Visual Studio Preview. Loading, loading, loading. This one's got my Beyonce theme, open project, random YouTube, okay, here's our project, again I'm doing this side by side which is a little weird, let me actually put myself down here, okay. But I'm pointing out that the Solution Explorer is not a file explorer. It's representing what's going on inside of the solution. And that's cool. That's actually useful because within that, you can see all of the libraries that we're using. You can see analyzers that are installed. You can see the framework that we're currently using. This is a logical view, not a physical view, but a logical view. So it's better than Notepad, of course, because I can start typing. I say console, and then when I hit dot, I hit console dot that moment there, you start getting 
IntelliCode, which is these ones here in the stars, those are machine learning has decided that it's very likely that I'm going to type right line or read line. And then I've got IntelliSense, which is all of the methods and properties that are attached to that, uh, that object console, so background color and things like this. And then, of course, I've got GitHub Copilot, which could then make recommendations and things. So you're getting a lot of help. You're getting a lot of help when you're inside of an IDE, an integrated development environment. Now, if we close this up, though, historically, I'm not going to save that. Historically, we, uh, people who are using Visual Studio Code have had not the full experience. You're not getting the full Visual Studio experience. You're getting some IntelliSense from what's called a language server. Um, and the language server is going to, um, to interrogate those objects. It's going to look at the objects and it's going to say, here's some suggestions on what you can do. And the language server provides things like everything from the syntax highlighting to the um, the interrogation of the objects, suggestions on what you're going to do next, and there's a, like a stack of them. But the language server knows what's going on. Now, now, as of today, we've got not just C Sharp, but the C Sharp Dev Kit. This is the new official C Sharp extension for Visual Studio Code, and this is really cool. This is cool because it adds Visual Studio Senior, Visual Studio for Windows features into Visual Studio Code. So if you prefer Visual Studio Code, you can use this. If you prefer Visual Studio, you can use Visual Studio. You see me switching back and forth between them. And this will work on Windows, Mac, Linux, or even in Code Spaces. So you're going to get not just project management, which is cool. I'll show you in a second. You're going to get testing. So I can actually right click and run tests. And then you get Roslyn powered. Roslyn is the C Sharp compiler language service for code navigation and things like that. So let's go and open our Visual Studio Code. I'm going to say code and hit dot where dot is the current folder. So I'm saying code dot. It's going to open up Visual Studio Code here. And you can see I've got my random YouTube. Now this is file based. This is the way that you're used to seeing C Sharp inside of Visual Studio Code. I, I'm seeing hidden folders. I'm seeing that bin and those, that obj, the one that we saw earlier in the terminal. Uh, and I'm actually seeing the project files and the solution file, which you probably wouldn't want to see and you don't see in Visual Studio proper. But I'm over here and I've installed the C Sharp Dev Kit. This is the extension. And the C Sharp Dev Kit will install other extensions. It'll install the C Sharp one. It'll install the runtime tool and all that kind of stuff. And then I can even extend that and install .NET MAUI for doing cross-platform uh, UI. But right now I'm going to focus primarily on the C Sharp dev kit. So the C Sharp dev kit, now you can go and install. And then I had to sign in just the same way that I sign in when I'm signing into Visual Studio Community. Or if you pay for Visual Studio, you sign in, you get the same thing. So if you already have Visual Studio, you have this. If you use Visual Studio Community, you sign in with the same account and it lights everything up, which is cool. Now, I want to point this out. We've got this file section here. Click away on that. You have this, this expanding accordion here, right? I'm going to open up Solution Explorer. That's new. Solution Explorer was added by the, the dev kit. And now you get, look at that. Look familiar? That's the Solution Explorer that we saw earlier in Visual Studio. We have Solution Explorer view inside of Visual Studio Code, which is hot. And then because it's Visual Studio Code, I can do kind of random stuff, including adding VS Code pets uh, and just have them run around my IDE. So it's, it's Visual Studio Code. This is an extension for Visual Studio Code, except they've taken that language server and that code that makes Visual Studio powerful and brought it over into Visual Studio Code, which is hot, okay? So there's our hello friends, hello C Sharp Dev Kit console dot. And look, see, there's those stars again. That's the IntelliCode. Here's the IntelliSense. It's making the same recommendations. And then look, that recommendation from Copilot about what I might want to potentially type next. Hit tab a couple times. Very cool. All right. Our little guys are down here running around.
Now I'm going to say run, hit F5, and I'm going to say, I'm going to run it in C sharp. I don't want to debug it in a container. I could do it in Docker. It's not a Maui application. I'm just going to hit F5 and run it in C sharp. So builds, put a breakpoint here real quick. Look, so now I got my breakpoint, got my watch window, got my locals. Here's my breakpoint down here, full debug support, doing exactly what you would expect, except I'm inside of Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code instead of Visual Studio. Hover over them, get help, get all the things that I want to get. So now let's go to something more complicated than Hello World. Let's go to actually like my podcast website, something that's a little bit more sophisticated. Okay, I'm going to move myself over a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so here is uh, Visual Studio Code with the dev kit. And on the left-hand side here, I've got the podcast. I have a podcast. You should listen to it. Here is my unit tests, my playwright tests, and the website itself. And you can see the icons indicating that these are tests. That's the solution. And then that's the website. Isn't that cool? You can open those up. You can see the packages and the relationships. If I go over to the testing one, you can notice that we have not just packages, but also project references. Again, just like Visual Studio, I've got the project reference right here, and I've got my packages and versions in solution. Now, you notice the Solution Explorer is on the left. That's just a Visual Studio codeism. You can move that around if you want to move that bar off to the right. It's totally up to you. But then we've also got the Test Explorer here. So in the Test Explorer, I've got all my unit testing that I can go and run. So I'm in Visual Studio Code using the C-sharp dev, dev kit. I'm gonna go and run my Hanselman its tests. Look at that. So I'm running those tests. You can see the timer going right here. You can see I can do filtering and all the kind of usual stuff, see whether or not those tests pass. They did pass, ship it, right? Not great. So very, very cool stuff going on right now in this space. Again, you just go to extensions, you type in C Sharp, and you're going to want to go and grab the C Sharp dev kit. That will automatically install the base language support for C Sharp. Works on Linux, works on Windows. And again, as you saw before, I can go and open those up in um, that same project is openable in Visual Studio. It's openable in Visual Studio Code. So. Pretty cool stuff happened today. Uh, it's generally available. It'll get automatically updated. Uh, so check it out. Thanks.